this picture took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Hey everybody, welcome back to Art of the Card, and this is my video for the YouTube Artist Collective. This round's theme was magical creatures or characters. We kind of couldn't quite decide. So first, let's go ahead and jump into like the sketching process. As with a lot of my paintings or pieces that I do, I like to do the initial sketch up on the computer and then either transfer that over onto paper or print it out. With watercolor, I always have to transfer it onto my watercolor paper until this one, which I'll talk about in just a second. But first, let's just talk about the, the ideas. So I wanted to pick a character a mythological character not just like a creature but like an actual character like a singular character and I I, I didn't think it would be that hard I, I was really interested in doing something with Pandora's box or muses um, Medusa I had a lot of ideas but I just couldn't nail down like a sketch that I wanted like I could see the pictures and I've talked about this in videos before how when I begin to create a picture sometimes I can see what it looks like in my head and then I can put that on paper but this one it's like I knew if I worked on it hard enough I'd find it but it, these were were not coming to me so I decided okay maybe Greek mythology is not what I wanted to do so I looked at some Japanese mythology some Irish legends and then finally went to Arthur, Arthur, Arthurian, Arthur, King Arthur and looked into some of his legends and ultimately decided to go with the lady in the lake, the one who has Excalibur, which is the sword, which gets placed in the stone, which then King Arthur pulls out of the stone, becoming king. I didn't do a ton of research because there's been so many spin-off ideas on the character. To be honest, I was running out of time. So... I just took the knowledge that I had on her and started to design the picture. Now, I'm doing this part not in time lapse, just so you can see why I did not record the whole entire process of the sketching. In fact, I did not record even probably 10% of the creation of this piece because watercolor is a slow medium. It can be, it can be really fast, but for this one, really slow and the sketching everything everything about this this piece was slow and meticulous and took way more time than i thought it was going to it was while i was sketching this line art out that i was dreading the thought of having to hand trace this onto watercolor paper but i really wanted to do the lady in the lake in water because it's all about water and i so i thought i, so I want to do it in water so i was looking at my printer and I discovered that there was a custom paper size option. I've looked for this before, like a whole bunch of times. I've never found it, but I found it this time and was able to print out this line art onto a, a 10 by 14 sized paper. This size right here, it's a pretty, pretty nice sized piece of paper and it printed out really cool. Now before I get into the painting process, as I stated in the title of this video, I want to share my favorite type of watercolor paper. I use a lot of different kind of water paper out there and I just want to kind of go over a couple of them with you. Now Strathmore has paper for just about every kind of use and the two that I find that I use the most are their Bristol and their Mixed Media. And the Mixed Media actually works really well with watercolor. Now the reason I like it is because it's mixed media, it takes all types of artwork pretty well, or art mediums really well. The second type of paper that I enjoy using is a Canson watercolor paper, and it has a little bit more tooth, that means it's a little bit rougher. If I wanna do a watercolor color pencil piece, I will generally go with this paper. The third type of watercolor paper that I use, I have never gotten in a large size, I've always gotten them in really small and kind of different shapes, and that is the fluid watercolor block. So block is watercolor paper that is glued on all four sides, except for a little part, and that really helps to keep the paper from buckling as bad. But by far, my favorite watercolor paper is the Arches watercolor paper, and just feeling it, 
you can see the difference. Oh, I love the texture. It's super thick. It's 100% cotton. And the way it interacts with my paints is completely different than say the Canon paper or even the Strathmore. It can be a little bit on the expensive side. Um, I will leave a link to where I purchased it on Amazon if you want to test it out for yourself. Um, I highly recommend it and it's the one that I always use for my my watercolor pieces that I want to do on really nice paper. Okay, so let's get on to the actual piece because I've been rambling on enough. So here you can see that I've printed out my piece um, from my printer. And again, I've turned the opacity down really, really low. In fact, at certain points after I started getting my layers in there, I couldn't see the line work anymore. And I would actually have to go back to look at the digital copy of it to figure out where things were. So I might turn it up just a little bit if I ever decided to do something like this again. But I liked it. In the finished piece, you don't see any of the line art at all. It just it looks really good. I get a lot of questions about watercolor and the process and the steps that I take in creating a piece. As far as the creating of a piece from start to finish, as I said, I probably only recorded about 10% of the footage. And with that, I still have over three hours of footage that I'm editing down into, you know, trying to make a watchable video. Uh, but you'll see the painting will jump from, from stage to stage. And you'll be like, whoa, that was a lot of stuff done. But if you'd like a slower paced video series on the process of creating a piece, I'm actually doing a small mini series on that and we're getting to the part where I'm going to be actually doing the finished piece. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave it linked at the end of this video so you can check it out. I'm going to be doing that piece in watercolor as well. And I'd love to be able to answer some of the questions that you guys have about watercolor. In the comment section of this video, I, I would love it if you guys would just post as many questions that you might have about watercolor. And then I will go through those during that video and try to answer as many as I possibly can or give you some examples and things like that. I don't want this video to be super long, so let me just talk about two more things. So first, the YouTube Artist Collective. For those of you who don't know, the YouTube Artist Collective is a group of artists here on YouTube, and every few months we have a theme that is chosen by you guys over on our Facebook page. You guys get to vote on the theme that all of us artists have to create under. So if any of you guys would like to be part of the choosing process for the next theme, I will have a link to the YouTube Artist Collective Facebook page in the description box below. You can do that. But there's more ways that you guys can be involved. There is an official list of members. I have them all listed in the description box below and we have a playlist that has all of the past YouTube Artist Collective pieces. Super awesome playlist, by the way, to watch if you're creating art and you just need some videos to play. It's a huge playlist and it just has everyone's videos that you can just binge watch the YouTube Artist Collective. But the thing that a lot of us don't always mention in our videos is you don't have to be an official member to join the fun. Anyone can be an unofficial member of the YouTube Artist Collective and join along in the fun. You don't even have to be a YouTuber to join. You just have to want to create a piece based on that theme. There could be a past theme that we did that you're like, oh, I would love to do that. Well then create a piece based on that. Make sure to tag us in your photos because I for one love to go and look at your guys' videos or photos, things that you have done. But if you want to be able to post your pictures or videos along with the rest of the YouTube artist community, make sure to follow us on Facebook so you can get those dates and then you can just toss your videos out there with us. So yeah, that's probably the number one question I get asked about the YouTube Artist Collective is if if other people can join. So I love encouraging any of you guys to join the fun. If you have a YouTube channel and want to be an official member of the YouTube Artist Collective or a guest member, you can always ask us over on our Facebook page and one of us will give you that information. The last thing I wanna talk about before I end this video is a little bit more about the art piece itself. So. Like I said before, I wanted to do the lady in the lake. I decided to do a little bit closer up, having her kind of hold the sword and halfway through the painting process, realized that she was looking a lot like my Alice piece, which I'm pretty sure my Alice in Wonderland piece might have been my first YouTube Artist Collective piece. Maybe my second, it might've been my second piece. Anyway, so I decided, you'll see I, when I started it, she was having like this really bright red hair. And then towards the end, I really darkened her hair down to this really deep auburn brownish hair because I didn't want her to look like the Alice character. <laughs> she looked a lot like that. 
because the making of this piece has taken me so long, I've been posting updated pictures of the creation process over on my Instagram account, which if you guys want to see the behind the scenes of things going on, you can definitely follow my social media on that. But several people asked me if this is going to be available as a print and yes it will. It'll take me a while to get my inventory for my Etsy shop ready, but I should be having it up on my Redbubble. Um, hopefully soon. So I will have links to that in the description box below. But here it is the finished piece. While I love the piece, it, I will say that this took so much time to make and I was actually really worried that I wasn't going to get it done even though I started it almost a week before the actual collective. Right now it's Friday night at almost midnight while I'm editing this video and uh yeah, I have to get it up in the morning, so <laughs> I am pushing the wire on this one. <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video. Make sure to check out the other YouTube Artist Collective pieces as well because I've been watching them while I have been creating and they are fabulous. So, so awesome. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in this video and as always, God bless you guys. Stay creative and we'll see you in the next art video. Bye-bye.